Hello, Bees Bladers. Welcome back and welcome newcomers to the channel. Now, lately on my unboxings, I haven't been bothering to show the box. If it's just cardboard with a piece of plastic, I'm not bothering to showing you. But this, the Trevisa, they come in a nice package. So I'm going to definitely show you right on top. Look at this. You get a very nice microcloth, very nice, very, very nice, and you get the regular, you know, Trevisa paperwork, and then, oh, hey, hey, we passed, <laughs> and it comes with a nice little, uh, I don't know, suede, suede, uh, whatever you call it, little pouchy pouch, and it comes like this, and look at that, would you look at it, let's check it out. This is the Trevisa Aquila. <laughs> it's the Aquila 03B. And this is, <laughs> I'm telling you what, I already know. Ho, 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 ho. She's got some heft. <laughs> this is going to be a work knife. And guess what? It has a convex edge. And guess what else? We're going to take it apart. Ooh, man. Wow, look at that. It's a chunker. It is definitely a chunker, and I'll go all the way around and give you a look at it, and we're going to disassemble it. We're going to deconstruct the knife. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, look at that. We got a pocket clip. Well, I would hope so. Ooh, yeah, it's strong, too. Uh, yeah, we've got some strength to it. Uh, looks like right side tip up only, not reversible, eh, eh, eh. but uh, you know what? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Look at that. Some nice, nice thickness comes down to a ooh, comes down to a tip all right you ready to see this blade are you ready pow right in the kisser ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. check it out convex action going on here look at there is you know it's almost like there's no what it's like there's no secondary grind it just kind of comes straight down let me clean this off oh man this is gorgeous this is, you know what, this is the first convex edge that I believe that I've had on the channel. That is, wow, look at that going all the way down, super clean. Ooh, that is nice. You have a swedge starting all the way back, coming up here, give a little bit of strength to that tip. Yes, look at that. Now this, okay, this has, you have my attention. Nice and clean. Uh, the plunge grind stops right there at the sharpening. So you, you don't really have a sharpening choil at all. So I would I would go for a sharpening choil right off the bat. There's the Trevisa logo. And this is G10. to give you a little bit of texture vision. Um, oh, oh, okay. All right. I thought it was going to be slick. It is not. It actually does have some good texture going on. And you have this whole boaster. Boaster? <laughs> we have a boaster up here. It's a nice bolster look. I like that. Uh, those are T6s going all the way down. It's nice and clean. There's that side. Man, that blade, that is really cool. I'm liking that blade. Nothing over here on this side but the D2. I wouldn't mind if the D2 was smaller. You know, I don't need to announce to the world that it's D2. But you know what? D2 is some good steel, and it takes a good edge. And D2 with a convex edge, this is going to stay sharp, and it's going to be a tough Tough blade. Let's see what this edge will do. Oh, 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 oh yes. Oh, 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 mama. That's what I'm talking about. It's just, it's just, oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I'm loving it. Oh, I can't wait to tell you about the Ergos. So your total length's 8.75 inches. You have a drop point blade with D2 blade steel. Has a beautiful satin finish. Your total blade length all the way up to the scales, 3.75 inches. And check this out. Sharpen length, 3.92 inches, baby. Your blade width's 1.02 inches. Your blade stock thickness is a hefty 160 thousandths of an inch. Your thickness behind the edge, well, look at this. It look, it just goes all the way down. I had to pick a spot, so I stuck with 11 thousandths. 11 thousandths behind the edge. Your handle material is G10. And closed from tip to tip, you're 5.02 inches. Your handle width's 1.09 inches. Your clothes width, 1.36 inches. Your handle thickness is 0.64 inches. This has a flipper for opening, ceramic ball bearings. It's a liner lock. It's a right side tip up only. You have a T8 in the pivot, T6 body screws. And this is the Trivia. He's a Aquila 03B. Taking a quick stab at the weight. Oh boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hefty. I'm gonna go with uh, six, uh, six and a quarter. I'll go with six, and it is.
6.02 ounces. Mm, nailed it. We already know the finish is beautiful. Uh, left and right, one out of 100. I'd give it about a one. If I really work at it, I can almost kind of feel something. But left and right, up and down, we are good to go. How is our lockup? Lockup is right there at about 40%. And are we centered? We are dead centered. And look at that tip. Look at it. Would you just look at it? And how about the pocket clip? Uh, in and out of the pocket. Oh, okay. The pocket clip is stronger than I thought it was going to be. But uh, there's a quick look at it. Um, it's not a lot of room, but it does. It. I mean, it has some strength. This isn't one of those ones that's going to bend out real easy. There's no mushrooms growing in the shade. You have a little bit. It's not deep carry, but there's not going to be much showing, which you probably just saw a clip of. All right, let's do some size comparisons. And all the knives I'm about to show you, there will be links in the description. Here's the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And how about the Ontario Rat Number 1? You know, I, I the Rat Number 1 I thought was a bigger knife. But look at the sharpen. Look at this. The sharpen length? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and here is the Kaiser Sheepdog 9 Flipper. Love it. And the QSP Penguin, you know, if you've watched my channel, you know you have to have a QSP Penguin. So there's those two. And I just have to put the new Towser K out here. I mean, look at that. It's so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. And here's the Petrified Fish PF838. Now that is a big full-size work knife and that is the territory we're in a lot of you i've had a lot of requests for four inch knives and this is pretty car pretty close pert near we're just under the four inch mark and i'll show you two more here is a big boy <laughs> the shielded charcos i thought this was a big one and then i was like oh wait a minute i know <laughs> look at that if you want a long blade there you go and one more the becker the bk40 look at that now there's some work knives for you. Now let's check out the action in the ergos. Before I forget, the G10 version, it, I think it runs around 73, the lower 70s. And then there's an ironwood, looks, which looks fancy. And it's in the upper 70s. I'll put links in the description. And don't forget, if you like my content, do me a favor, give me a big thumbs up. And don't forget to say something in the comment section. Even if it's not about the knife, just say hello to everyone else. Now let's check this out. You ready? Pow! Right in the kisser. Man, it comes out with a Thor tie. And that, you know what? Look at that. That is pretty, pretty drop shutty. Man. And with that big of a blade, it's not a hard feat. Ooh, yes. So this was the push button. And then here is the light switch. And that light switch is lovely. Look at this. That jimping is absolute perfection. They nailed it. Nailed it. It grabs your finger. There is no slipping at all. That is just skin, yes. And the pass-through, pass-through is fantastic. It is not hard whatsoever. I don't have to use a fingernail. I don't have to push down. I don't have to dig. Very easy on the pass-through. How about left-handed? Oh, yeah. That jipping is a dream. <laughs> How about the ergos? My hand is four inches from here to here, three and a half from here to here, and from the bottom of my palm to the tip of my middle finger, you already know, seven and a quarter. And... Oh my goodness, you know what? This is extremely comfortable. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. I'm not just just holding it in the regular grip. That is fantastic. The, the uh, scales are contoured, which means they're rounded like, like that. <laughs> oh man, that is, that is, just take my word for it. It's very comfortable and you know the size of my hand you have plenty of room if you have large hands and you want a large knife with a convex edge are you kidding me oh my goodness now there's no jimping on the top but your hand just locks right into place and giving it the b squeeze no hot spots at all and something else i noticed a second ago is look at here we have the shadow box look going on where you can just barely see the edges of the scale or not the scales but the liners going through here they are nice and slick, so you don't have any sharp, no sharp edges. You know what? There's, what? Usually, this spot right on the inside right here on G10 is sharp. They nailed it. It is not. It doesn't, what? <laughs> that is awesome. So, the ergos are just, the ergos are fantastic. 
I have no complaints whatsoever. I have a couple little nitpicks, but you know what? We'll take it apart real quick, and then I'll come back and tell you what I think about it. All right, before I take this knife apart, this is everything that I ever need to take my knives apart. Modern pocket knives. Um, you got to get you some doodads. I have links in the descriptions of all this stuff. I have bunch of discount codes to a bunch of different places. This is KPL, stands for Knife Pivot Lube. I have 10% off for them, 10% off White Mountain Knives, 10% off Kaiser Knives, 10% here and there and everywhere. Just go check all that out, and you have to get you a Weeha Bit Set. Don't just go on wherever site, you know which ones I'm talking about, and just buy a, a Torx set. Get you a Weeha Bit Set. They're super tough, plus this one doubles as a bit driver. And the reason I recommend, recommend, the reason I recommend these, I recommend, <laughs> love it. I recommend these two because they both have a set of Torx bits. And there's sometimes when you need two of the same, and this is just like the perfect setup I've found to recommend. All right, let's take this knife apart. Well, we're off to a good start because there's nothing on this side. That means, uh, yeah, I think I have to take it apart from this side. And if this is your first time here, or if you forgot somehow, or if you haven't been there, Friday night, Bees Blades live at the Hive. All right. And I hope that made you remember Friday nights because you're like, oh, man, I can't wait. It's almost Friday. We have so much fun on Fridays. We really do. From 8.15 to 11.15, we have a blast on Friday nights. It is so much fun, and I always got to remember to mention it because we have new folks that discover Bees Blades live stream every Friday, and they're like, oh, check it out. Okay, so <laughs> pay attention to what you're doing. So I just took the bolster right off with that screw. I'm just going to leave it in there just so it you know, it stays, with, stays in its home where it goes. There you go. Look at that. So let's take off this part now. Very nice. So the screws are coming out pretty nicely, and the, this is get good screw. These are fancier ones. If you're just a beginner, and well, you know, if you want to get a fancy one to begin with, it won't hurt. But I tried to show you the, the more economical stuff to start out with if you're just starting out, or if you're just now deciding like, you know what, I think I would like to take my knives apart. And you can always check with the manufacturer to see if they have, you know, rules against no if you do that you void this or whatever but you'll find that uh, it seems like uh, the majority of folks once they've been into knife collecting for a while they start taking their knives apart just saying uh let's see are we gonna come apart here um what is going on oh it was just kind of stuck on there with a little bit of oil and i have a cloth a microfiber cloth you can use any kind of cloth just don't get one that's all fibrous it's gonna leave a bunch of stuff behind and i have some rubbing alcohol on there so that's very nice, and you know what? I This thing is clean. I might not have to clean it. We'll take a look. We'll take a look here. Um, can we wiggle it just a little bit? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I, did, I didn't show you before. It has a G10 backspacer, by the way. And with this, I have these plastic, little plastic spudgers, and I'm pretty sure I've, I put a link in the description, too, because I, I get thanked. By people that are like, I'm so glad you put that in there because I couldn't find it. There are some things on Amazon that you just cannot find and I have to really search for. Um, yeah, it's pretty clean. So there's what the inside looks like. And there's your liner lock right there. And that right there is your detent ball. And, you know, it's relatively clean. And here are your ceramic, it said, I thought it said ceramic ball bearings. Are those ceramic? Those look steel. Uh, we're going to check that. Let's We'll check that. Man, oh man, I love that blade. And if you look, they're open, facing upwards. Because I know you guys will check me. The check police, you guys are good at catching me. Now I'm going to get my stop pin and put my stop pin over here. I'm starting to get a little bit better. Maybe. We'll see. At keeping track of my stuff used to, I would just let stuff roll all over the place. And I couldn't find it. And, you know... Now I'm going to make it tougher for you to find the mistakes when I make them. <laughs> or the goofs, anyway. All right. Um, you know what? Yeah, those, those definitely do not look like ceramic. But you know how you can check it if you want to for fun? You can use a magnet. But the, when they're ceramic, they're usually black. But if you like to do the fun little details like me, you can use a magnet. And there you go. They are steel ball bearings, which I love ball bearings. They are so cool. Now, I could be wrong. It might have said that they were uh, ceramic, but I checked anyway. 
Uh, let's see. Do we have a D-shaped pivot? Yes, we do. See right, right there how this side right here is flat? That's what's going to keep it from spinning when it matches up with somewhere, which I haven't found yet. Uh, we'll figure it out here in a second. Do we have a little nub over here? Um, I'm not seeing a nub yet. We're, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> now, let's see. It has to match up with... Ah, okay. See our bolster right here? That That is what is going to stop it from spinning. So we have G10 stopping it and not metal. So that would be, you know, a tiny little nitpick is I would rather metal be what's stopping my blade from spinning rather than G10. But as long as you don't put the wrong Loctite on there, I don't think it'll, it'll ever be an issue for you. Just don't put too much Loctite. And we are definitely getting it cleaned off. Don't put too much Loctite when you put it back together. And make sure you get the right kind. I showed you medium there just a minute ago. Don't get, don't get the red or the heavy or whatever it's called. You get the wrong kind and you will have trouble taking your knife apart in the future. Just saying. And these little doodads, you can use them for all kinds of stuff. And now here, here's a quick note. It's a very fingerprinty blade. It's beautiful, but it's very fingerprinty. So fingerprinty. So I hope you're having a fantastic day. And no matter what time of the day it is or the nighttime it is when you're watching this, the one thing that folks tend, tend to mention and tend to notice is that, you know, I'm in a good mood most of the time. And life is too short to be a grunt butt. And knife collecting is just one of the many things that I have found that I enjoy so much. And when I'm doing these uh, disassemblies and these, these videos, I feel like I'm talking to you all. And I love it when you say something in the chat. So there's the whole knife, the whole thing taken apart. Let's put it back together. Now, I'm getting in the habit of putting my KPL Heavy on first for all you guys that always catch me and I miss it. Yeah, how about that? How about that? Are we make we you know it's possible we might be making a little bit of marked improvement. Um, yeah, I shouldn't speak so soon because I'm gonna make a big goof up, put the knife back together, and it won't have the uh, back space or something on it. And I'll be like, all right, never mind, forget I said it. And here is the KPL light. That was KPL heavy. I put on the detent hole, and we'll put a little bit of this. Oh boy, I went heavy duty. <laughs> That's way too much. All right, let's see if I can spread the love a little bit. Oh my gosh, yeah, I knew I put too much. Let me take that off. Let's not go there. All right, so I'm just gonna put, I'm just barely touching it because I had way too much on there. Let's do that, and then we'll put some around here, around the middle. I have plenty on my doodad to go all the way around this. You don't need a lot. You know, it had pretty good action already. Really didn't need a whole lot of improvement. All right, there's that, and let's see. Where'd my pivot roll to? Okay, I thought I lost my pivot there for a minute. And we're gonna turn, I, get, I don't remember which way the T went, but you know what, we'll find out here in just a second because this is going to go like this. So our T, our uh, D shape is going to go that way. So let's put this dude back the way we found it. And I'm just gonna get a little more KPL, not much. That stuff, I'm telling you what, it comes out of that bottle like nobody's business. Just going to spread the love a little bit. Are we focused? Yes. Now we're focused. Because as you all know, my focus needs more focus. Now what am I forgetting? I have the feeling I'm forgetting something. Maybe not. We'll find out. The stop pin's going right here, and obviously that's what's going to stop your blade when it opens. Now I've had a I've had a lot of fun chatting with you all, and just besides just the uh, the live streams, I feel like I'm chatting with you when when you uh, say when you talk to me, and I get a lunch break, I'll get on there, and I don't have time to respond to everybody on my lunch breaks and stuff like that, but I do re I get to read your comments, and then I try to respond to them later or whatever whenever I can. Um, you know, time is of a premium. That's why I always say live life in the present because, you know, right now is what you have. Enjoy enjoy what you have while you have it. <laughs> All right, so everything is clicking back into place very nicely. And hopefully I'm not eating my words and everything will uh, continue to go back into the place nicely. But I love it when you all say hello and you're like, hey, have a great day, have a great week. And not necessarily just to me, I'm just saying to everyone. I like it when you guys come in and, and comment to, to other folks. Like, hey, everybody. 
And something else, when you're in the comments, the comment section of a video, you can check because a lot of times people will ask a question that you might have an answer to. And if you're a regular on the channel, you, I would appreciate it. You know, if you see somebody ask a question, by all means, if you will help them out because there are folks discovering knives and knife collecting every day. And you have learned a lot, just like I have. You know, we've learned a lot together. So sharing is, is sharing your info and your knowledge is part of this knife community, which is just spectacular. Now I did, I do, I'm doing this backwards. I usually put my pivot in first. We'll see if it uh, makes a difference or not. A lot of these, these knives that I, uh, disassemble, reassemble and all that. I, I usually don't have much trouble with them centering. And by the way, even with everything else, everybody should have a stubby because if you get a screw that is tough, I don't think any other little bit driver on the market gives you such good solid grip because you don't want to strip a screw. That is not cool. And by the way, the thread locker I showed you, the only time I use thread locker is if a screw starts coming loose on me. That's the only time I start, I use it. Other than that, I leave it. And if, if my pivot starts coming loose, then I will put some thread locker on it. And look here, I spun. Why did I spin? Um, because I didn't get locked in. All right, let's get that turned around. And you know what? I think that, I don't think that D, the D is matched up. So let's look here and see what the deal is because that that is spinning on the other side and it shouldn't be doing that as I talk away from the camera. So are we pushed all the way in as far as it's going to go? I think we are. It's just that it's only sticking out that much. So let's put this on and see if this stops or if it's going to actually stop it. It doesn't look like it's actually touching or stopping it. So maybe that's why it was spinning because it's not matching. Let's see here. Now I'm holding it. it. Looks like it's pretty even. I'm holding it with my left finger and it's tightening down. So it looks like we do, looks like we made it. Looks like we ah. I so wish I could. I so wish I could sing on the channel. I could do impressions if I can think of ones to do. But this is, it's coming back together nicely. I think everything is good. We'll check and see how solid it feels. Just checking everybody. All right, are we solid? Oh yeah, we're solid. Nothing up and down, nothing left and right. Are we centered? Dead centered. How's the action? Oh, oh, oh yeah. It's way smoother. All right, let's go back to the big screen. So some final thoughts on the Treviza Aquila. Um, it has great action. The ergos are spectacular. The grind, this convex grind is, I mean, it is awesome. I am excited. I can't wait to use it. Um, couple nitpicks. It is, you know, because you have that pretty satin finish, you are going to be very fingerprinty. Um, there is no sharpening toil to speak of. And one other little nitpick is that on, on the other side, that D shape, the only thing that's going to stop the D shape from spinning is the G10 on this bolster area. And it just barely makes contact. So that would be one thing. And then as far as price point, the only thing I can figure why you would have, you know, the seven in the seventies, for a D2 knife would be that fancy grind. And the fact that it the fact that it's a convex grind, and to give you an idea, if you can see, which you probably can't, but trying to show you, it starts up here and just slowly goes all the way down to the edge. There's not a defined secondary bevel. You see there? That's why it was so hard to get it behind the edge because it just disappears into the into the edge. That is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, edges you can have on a knife. So I think that definitely is factored into the price point. The color is really good. I think the ironwood even looks better than this one. But I don't have many bad nitpicks whatsoever. I think it's very comfortable. It's a nice big blade. It's heavy duty. And wow. I mean, the ergos are just outstanding. I like the shadow box look. I like the aesthetics of it. I think it's a pretty good deal. I'm curious what you think about it. Tell me in the comments if you have any thoughts on it. You know, one other little thing is that I wish it had a uh, reversible pocket clip. I kind of wish that on just about every knife unless it's a really aesthetically pleasing knife. But until I see you again or talk to you in the comments or see it the live stream, remember, 
Live life in the present. Keep a Band-Aid handy. And don't cut yourself.